Good afternoon. My name is Murat Sanmez. I'm a member of the Managing Board of the World Economic Forum. Also, the head of the Forum Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution in San Francisco. A year ago, in this town, we announced a concept of creating a platform, a place, a dedicated space to accelerate the impact of the Fourth Industrial Revolution, not just for the privileged few who can afford it, but for the rest of the society. It was a concept. It was uh, warmly adopted by a number of uh, businesses, uh, governments, um, and they said, if you set it up, we will be a part of it. And in the original founding team, Japan was the METI, Minister of Economy and Trade and Industry, was the first government and said, we're in. And in fact, their fellow showed up in San Francisco even before we launched the center. <laughs> that shows the importance and the attention. Um, we also had Sompa Holdings uh, from insurance sector and said, look, these changes have a huge impact on insurance and we're in thanks to uh, Sakurada San, followed by Suntory later on as a founding partner. And our goal at the center is to accelerate the impact to citizens and society by bringing together governments, civil society, businesses, international organizations, experts, um, to accelerate, to create these governance protocols, accelerate them by implementing pilots. In just uh, 10 months, this sounds better. <laughs> Should I start again or good to go? Okay, you can replay. Yes. <laughs> In just 10 months, uh, we have achieved uh, a lot. It was an exciting moment. We established a truly a dream team uh, uh, of leaders on blockchain, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, data policy, drones, autonomous vehicles, precision medicine, and the environment, and agile governance. We have today 37 partners, including the founding partners, Sompo and Suntory, Microsoft, SAP, Palantir, Tuxel, Kaiser Permanent, and Reliance Holdings. I was really excited when we launched the center and get, got the uh, attention and the adoption from around the world. Today, I am 10 times, 100 times more excited because uh, with the active participation of the Japanese government and active collaboration with Asia Pacific Institute, we're announcing the opening of our very first sister center in Japan, in Tokyo. I will now invite uh, Minister Tadao Yanese, Vice Minister of METI, for your remarks, uh, Vice Minister. Thank you, Murat. Thank you, Murat. Thank you, Murat. Uh, I'm very pleased to announce the launch of the World Economic Forum Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution Japan. The great risk of the Japanese economy is a shortage of manpower in the short time and the declining population in the long term. While this is a disadvantage, it can be the biggest advantage in boldly advancing the fourth industrial revolution. Why? Japan is the only place in the world that is to drastically improve, that is able to drastically improve the labor productivity by making use of IoT, AI, big data without worrying about unemployment problem. Japan is in a superior position as a test bed for making visible the potential demands of a highly aging society and for conducting social experiments to ensure the best outcomes. Everyone in Japan, regardless of age or residence, should be able to go where they want, be the life they want, and maintain connection with the society in spite of physical decline. The World Economic Forum Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution Japan has three roles, my, as far as I understand. First is the promotion of the create innovative projects, specifically healthcare, precision medicine, mobility, including an <coughs> autonomous vehicle, mobility as a service, and drones for aging society. Second is to build a network of global industry, academia, government partnerships. Sister institutions located all over the world should become one massive platform 
If you go to sister institutions, you will be able to connect with the world's most advanced community. Such a gateway will be built in Japan. Third, it's to overcome the governance gap, which is the gap between advanced technology and regulations, and is a gap among each country's regulations. The Japanese government will introduce a regulatory sandbox system that allows try first on a project-by-project -project basis. By doing so, we will build test beds for overcoming the world's most advanced challenges and promote rapid implementation of innovative technologies. The Japanese government is committed to realizing Society 5.0, which will lead to resolving the social problems by utilizing fruits of the fourth Industrial Revolution Center in Japan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vice Minister. I now would like to invite uh, Dr. Yoichi Funabashi, Chairman of Asia Pacific Initiative and also a founding member of the uh, Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution in Japan. Thank you, Murat. Uh, <coughs> first of all, I really am grateful for your inspiration and the tremendous support that you, are, you have offered uh, since uh, uh, last summer. Uh, and I also, my special thanks to, uh, goes to my Japanese colleagues here on the stage. Um, I'm delighted to uh, join the representative from the World Economic Forum and uh, the Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry of the Japanese government to announce the uh, founding of the Fourth Industrial Revolution Japan Center today. The Fourth Industrial Revolution cannot be realized without a new model of private-public partnership. A traditional model of the government uh, simply cannot keep up with that dramatic speed of the technological innovation. At the same time, the radical technological innovation cannot be deploy deployed at a scale without public trust and due process. So what the world needs is a new way for the government to work with the private sector, agile, private, public partnership, to innovate, more specifically to design, pilot, gather data, and uh, 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 roll out, optimize, roll out, and update the technological deployment in societies. The role of uh, Asia Pacific Initiative, our institute, as a founding partner of that Japan Center is to convene stakeholders in Japan to uh, help establish this new model of the private-public partnership. Finally, uh, let me applaud the World Economic Forum, and particularly uh, Professor Klaus Schwab, for the ideas uh, to create this center, sister centers. Sister center uh, is an institutional innovation in itself. <coughs> this really allows us uh, to uh, harness that uh, techno technological prowess and reap the maximum benefits of the fourth industrial revolution. So once again, I really uh, am grateful uh, for the government of Japan 
and the World Economic Forum to allow uh, this to happen. At our institute, uh, we have uh, always prided ourselves, our independence, and our global outlook, and uh, initiative taking. But the success of the Japan Center really requires us to double down our efforts, to double down our all values. Thank you. Thank you, Fanabashi-san. Nakanishi-san, um, this cannot happen without active participation of the business community. And you personally also have been uh, leading the concept of Society 5.0. And I would welcome your remarks about the center in Japan and your thoughts on the business community's engagement. Uh, thank you very much, Murat-san. Uh, the recent you know, three or four years, uh, the World Economic Forum, the annual meetings are uh, discussing of the how to manage of the, the very strong wave of the digitalization. As you know, that uh, digitalization has, uh, has changed of the, uh, the society's fundamentals very dynamically. Sometimes uh, the positive and sometimes the negative factors we have. So that uh, I clearly remember the three years ago discussions. Many people talk about of the, uh, some of the, the very critical phenomena uh, caused by the digitalization. But uh, recently, that uh, these waves will change of the, all of the global fundamentals. So the next step is that how to manage of this the positive, negative factors of the digitalization. So that uh, fourth industrial revolution, uh, the rivals in uh, San Francisco, is really that uh, taking this uh, you know strong initiative to establish of the uh, the such kind of the positive factors, how to manage of the uh, the sum of the risk. Society 5.0 is also the same concept because of the, uh, the initial stage of the digitalization. Many people talk about only industrial applications. But now the, uh, this digitalization is a very, very important tool mm -hmm. to visualize of the many phenomena of the society. That's a great opportunity for us to making a more you know, ideal society so that Society 5.0 is a new creation of the values for the futures. And also that the we already having the positive and negative factors, how to share the common goal, sharing of the goals of the futures. This time, the World Economic Forum is uh, really the, this, the very fundamental discussions will be closed. So they are the, the Japan Center is uh, also the very strong uh, initiative to making this uh, the, the the positive waves to create of the next the so, uh, societies, the futures. Well, that's a very important point. So not simply of the economical uh, the development, is uh, how to establish of the digitalized society. The, so that uh, this might be the widening spread out of the global standard to make uh, uh, the, our activities more productive. So that's a very uh, great opportunity. Thank you very much for the uh, Rats on the initiative to create this center. Thank you very much. It's our collective initiative, so thank you. <laughs> um, you know, the impact on society is really important. And I think with the Japan Center, we all collectively have the opportunity to create the reference architecture for an aging society and uh, em embracing the fourth industrial revolution to benefit the society and the people. And also the impact, positive impact on uh, individuals and how do we minimize the negative impact? And as the International Organization for Public-Private Cooperation, in my view, this is one of the finest examples of how the forum, on a long-term commitment basis, can catalyze collaboration between government, civil society, and the business community initially uh, represented here. And if I may say so, Society 5.0 needs a new operating system in terms of governance protocols and uh, the fourth industrial revolution may be that operating system. With that, I'd like to thank uh, all of you uh, for being here, as well as the business leaders uh, from Japan, uh, showing your commitment uh, and attention to this important topic, and open it up to questions. So if you can raise your hand, introduce yourself, ask the question and to whom you're asking it. We'll take a few of them if there are many, or we'll go one at a time. So if you have a question, please raise your hand.
Thank you for everyone. I'm uh, Mr. Park from Mail Business Newspaper Korea. Um, 한국어 매일 마이니치 게이자 신봉 됐어. I have one question to Vice Minister Yanase Sang and uh, Chairman Naganishi Sang, and also congratulations on your assumption as a Chairman of Geidan Nen. Okay. <laughs> and um, everybody talks about these days about blockchain, uh, and I want to know how uh, do you prepare for the blockchain? Um, new um, new era s driven by blockchain technology. So there's uh, something to do be done by government and by uh, private sector. So I want to uh, hear about those um, fact about from two per two Yana uh, Sesang and Naganishi-san, please. Naganishi-san, please. Thank you. Is there another question? question. Yeah, thank you very much. I have a question for Mr. Inasa san please, and also to Mr. Nakanish san uh, on the Can you uh, introduce yourself? Oh, sorry, yes, my name is Enda Current from Bloomberg News. The news on tariffs on washing machines and solar products that the U.S. announced yesterday, given the theme of Japan's uh, aspiration to be an, a world leader in innovation and electronic goods and the like, what does that mean for the Japanese economy, and does, what does it mean for Japan's ambitions as an exporter, those tariffs? Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, one more, and then we'll get into the answers. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Tirani Shia from uh, Asahi Shinbun. Uh, so I have a question to Yana-san and Nakanishi-san. So uh, Yana-san mentioned about the uh, governance gap between uh, countries. So what is the biggest challenge for Japanese, uh, Japanese companies to introduce, for example, the, the system, uh, for example, in Germany or the other country in the US, or for example, to, to Japan, what is the biggest barrier for, I mean, Japanese com companies to introduce uh, similar types of system? Thank you. Maybe we can start with blockchain. Uh, Vice Minister or Funabashi-san or Nakanishi-san, um, if you'd like to comment on it. Okay. So re regarding the, the first question, uh, uh, the blockchain issues. My understanding is that there are two uh, challenges uh, for Japan to face the blockchain new area. One is, is of course, to the, the current uh, legal system doesn't match because our uh, financial uh, laws uh, didn't expect the emergence of blockchain. So then the Japanese government is preparing to uh, introducing a new type of law, step by step, or as, as always. But the second big uh, headache for Japan is uh, not only the uh, legal problem, but rather the, uh, the, uh, the business uh, situation. I mean, the Japanese uh, financial institutions uh, have introduced a very, very robust financial uh, system. Uh, IT systems. So uh, if uh, blockchain replaces uh, the financial uh, payment system or something like that, then the suddenly the all of the vested uh, uh, sunk cost of the robust uh, IT system uh, will uh, have no value. So then this will bring about a very big uh, cost in trouble and headache for the uh, leaders. So then, not only they introduce a new uh, legal mechanism, but also we need to think about how to uh, smoothly uh, transfer from the uh, current system to new uh, technology. Thank you. Now, Kanishi-san, do you want to add the? Yes, uh, that uh, blockchain is a very new, the, the very, uh, trusted transaction systems, but not the simply of the base of the Bitcoin only. So the, uh, we will create of the uh, various you know, that, uh, financial schemes, but not only the financial schemes. How to manage of the uh, total supply chains, including of the some trade informations to transfer the among of the uh, industries. Those kind of the other uh, real move we need to have a very wide range of the other challenges to establishing of the 
low cost, reliable transaction management systems, not the centralized schemes. So we are looking at uh, such kind of the positive moves of the digitalization, so the very important uh, future trend. Um, at the center, if you look at the projects, blockchain is one of the nine. Uh, we see it as foundational technology. And I personally think that blockchain has even more potential than the World Wide Web had 20 years ago in really changing the way we work. If you look at IoT's Internet of Things as a source of data, you need to verify the authentication, you need to authenticate the identity of the IoT. So blockchain could be a platform for that. If you look at data ownership protocols, maybe we decouple ownership from rights to use and tokens. In uh, Ethereum's smart contracts and tokens uh, architecture provides a facility for that. If you look at um, the ability to define cross-border data flows, again, blockchain can provide that uh, platform. It's not scalable yet, but the internet and the web was not scalable 20 years ago, so we'll get there. So it represents a huge opportunity. The second question was on the governance gap. Um, maybe Vice Minister and Funabashi-san, maybe you can share your thoughts on that. I think uh, <coughs> um, it is crucial for the uh, new technology uh, to be deployed. Uh, in compatible manners with that value systems and ethical standard that each society holds. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, I think that in the process of harnessing that the new technologies, uh, it's inevitable for any societies to be confronted with that, uh, the gap, uh, including governance gap. So I think it's very much important for the fourth industrial center uh, to uh, try to uh, narrow the gap, uh, preferably harmonize uh, uh, governance across the board. And that's uh, one of the reasons why I think we strongly uh, believe that strategic value of that fourth industrial center, uh, San Francisco center, as well as that uh, uh, sister centers. Thank you. Vice Minister. Should I answer to the, his second question on the tariff or the government? Um, uh, you can pick either. Mm -hmm. it's okay. Uh, regarding the, uh, the question on tariff imposed by U.S. yesterday, uh, our uh, uh, central uh, uh, interest is to uh, uh, keep the WTO consistency. Uh, of course, the safeguard uh, is accepted by WTO, but uh, I don't know at this moment, this case uh, is consistent with WTO or not. So we need to check. But uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, regarding the tariff on uh, electric uh, product, high-tech product, the after the uh, WTO, the development of WTO is very, very slow and limited. But in this area, uh, we succeeded in introducing ITA, the Information Technology uh, Zero Zero Tariff Agreement. It had a very imp big impact. It is big. I think it is the biggest success of WTO after uh, uh, Uruguay uh, round WTO. So then uh, we try to check and to minimize the trend of protectionism. And regarding the, uh, the third question, the, what is the biggest uh, barrier in Japan? Of course, uh, many people complain the uh, slow uh, action of the Japanese government. Yes, it's true. But uh, in this ad administration, we are uh, introducing a lot of the, uh, new trial such as a strategic, a strategic uh, deregulation zone. And then now, in this direction, uh, the Abe administration is trying to introduce a new law for uh, uh, sandbox, a technological sandbox. The, the reason is if we change uh, the regulation, uh, everything, it is uh, very difficult, and uh, we especially 
uh, when we face a very, very uh, new uh, innovation, a uh, trial uh, should be step by step. So then the idea of introducing the sandbox system in Japan is to allow them to try and error among the limited uh, participants. So then we can allow some uh, error. So, but, uh, so then if the trial was successful, then we can, uh, the, the, new, uh, the new regulation or new deregulation broader uh, the next step. So then that is our trial based on the Japanese culture. Thank you. Any more questions? Um, I'd like to go back to a question on the uh, tariffs. The physical goods of uh, movement of goods is important, but imagine a scenario where you can 3D print any product in the world, uh, allowing aging society with highly skilled people remaining at home and using the fourth industrial revolution technologies to create products which can be distributed close to the point of consumption using 3D printers and delivered uh, for the last mile using a shared ride service. So the fourth industrial revolution really has a lot of opportunities on enabling the aging society, the underprivileged, or even the current full-time workers to engage in multiple uh, services and functions at a global level. And there is a need for a new way of looking at the trade flow agreements because most of it will not be physical anymore. Because effectively, if you're 3D printing a product, you're importing it without crossing it uh, through the physical border. And that's why our, uh, one of the 14 systemic issues we're looking at at the forum level is the international uh, trade in the fourth industrial revolution. And at the center itself, we're looking at cross-border data flows, moving from WTO to EWTO. And uh, Nima san maybe you can comment on that. Uh, you are exposed to that in the consumer side. Well, thank you very much for the question. Um, as a matter of fact, the uh, Japanese government is now leading the, uh, at the WTO in a coalition of uh, 70 countries uh, to work around uh, e-commerce, which is a uh, uh, data flow you mentioned about. The, the, there is a, a lot of concern that uh, across both the data flow would be limited by a certain simple power. And we need the technology to, make, to allow the data cross the border. So I think uh, this technology will make it happen. I expect that. Okay. And blockchain could be the, potentially the foundation. Yeah, and that also that uh, very important point is that already Murasan mentioned. The current you know, business relation is not uh, simply of the exporting or importing. It's a kind of the partnership, how to create of the new value chain, those type of the, uh, you know, that, uh, the different way based on uh, digitalization. That's uh, very, very important for the futures. In that uh, environment, uh, really, that uh, new type of the, uh, the, the rules are required. So the current tariff is uh, really that the simplified world. But uh, next generation, we need uh, EWTOs, <laughs> already Murasa, Murasa mentioned. The, the same issues is uh, related to the, uh, the govern governance gap. The, we really need uh, new rules for how to deal with the data, who owns it, and how to use it, those kind of the, uh, new rules has to be created. Thank you. With that, uh, Anasi-san, Funabashi-san, uh, Nakanishi-san, and the rest of our uh, guests here, I'd like to thank you for being here. To mark the beginning of uh, the Fourth Industrial Revolution uh, collaboration in the context of Japan, not only for the Japanese uh, business and society and government, but for the rest of the world. Just looking at this interactive discussion, I cannot wait to have our center launched. Uh, delays us by the summer and look forward to showing the results. And thank you again for being here and thank you again for your support. Thank you very much. Thank you.